Hi everybody, I'm Tim from TroughtonFeather.com and in this fly tying video we're going to tie the purple soft hackle which is perfect for representing the Isonychia otherwise known as the slate drake. Stay tuned. Let's start tying this purple soft hackle. In my Stonfo Transformer vise, I have a hook from Allen Fly Fishing. It's their N202, it's a size 12. It's their hopper and terrestrial hook, though I absolutely really love it for this application. The thread we're gonna be using is Unithread ADOT. The color's black, and we're, we're gonna tie that in at about the halfway point for this hook. Just work our way back to the approximate tail tie-in, which will be just in front of the barb. At this point, uh, I'm going to take just a brief moment to talk about the, the tailing fibers we're going to be using. There's a book that I'll be referencing later in this video, and, and the book is going to be recommending a dark dun hen fiber. And, and though that hen hackle is just a really classic and traditional one that, that works really well in this pattern, I'm going to encourage you to check out some Coke de Leon instead. I've been using this material uh, quite a bit recently, and whenever I say recently, I mean for a few years. What's great about this material is that Aside from the fact that it has just some incredible modeling to it, which gives that, that lifelike look, it's also extremely resilient and it won't tear easily. So I'm going to really encourage you to check this out and I would recommend either the medium or dark pardo colored Coke de Leon for this one. I'm just going to grab a healthy clump of this stuff. I want to make sure that when I tear it off, I keep it together in terms of the, the tip length. Once I have that clump ready, I'm just going to line it up, and I want this to be about, from the hook eye, I want it to go back about three quarters of the way. And when I have that, I'm just going to transfer it to my left hand and lock it in place with just a few wraps. And it's at this point I can remove my left hand and see if I have the length that I'm going for. In this case, I do, so I'm just going to wrap back a little bit, and next we're going to tie in our tail, or I'm sorry, our ribbing material. The ribbing material I'm going to recommend using is uni wire. It's, I'm sorry, it's the uni French wire. The size is small and the color is silver. This is a really cool looking wire. When I tie this in, I'm actually going to tie it in so that it extends up the body of the, of the hook, just giving the, the body a little bit more uh, of a width to it. And I'm, before I do anything else, I'm actually going to trim my tailing fibers just behind the hook eye. Now I can lock everything in place, ensure that it's all going to be locked down, everything's going to be smooth, and I'm going to come back to just in front of where the barb would be. Now this hook is a barbed hook, I've already pinched it down, and I would encourage you to do the same, but once we get back to that point, let's tie in our body material. Now at the end of the, the tying portion of this, I'm going to talk a little bit more in detail regarding the body material. But for right now, let's just tie in this stuff from the Delaware, Delaware River Club, or DRC. The color is mahogany brown. If you look down on the first line, they recommend this for the lead wing coachman, which is basically a, a synonym for the isonychia. The, the stage is done or a merger. There's the common name, and that, that's the isonychia bicolor. Now, we're really attempting to recommend that, or to imitate that emerger stage, which is why this is a really great dubbing to do that. I'm just going to pull a really healthy clump out just to kind of show you this stuff. What I like about this dubbing is that it's a blend of a lot of different colors. And some days I look at it and there's a lot of purple. And other days, there's a lot of light olive. And, and it really just has some great looks to it. And I believe that part of their theory is that if the fish are looking for that certain color, they're going to see it in this material, um, especially for this isonychia. So I would encourage you to check out this stuff. And the other great thing about it, whenever you put it on, it dubs really easily. You can get just a very fine amounts because we want to keep it, we don't want to just overwhelm the body with this material. So I'm going to try to keep it as dubbed as tight as possible. Get just a little bit more on here. Okay, once I have that ready, I'm just going to verify that there's no thread showing throughout this. 
let's just make our way forward with touching wraps. There's a section in here that did not dub really heavily so I just had to go over it a little bit. Now as I get up by this eye I'm actually going to wrap back just a little bit to increase a little bit of my material at the thorax of this fly. Now if you see anything coming out, any fibers, you can just grab them, pull them out of the way. If you really don't want any of those things, you can go the whole way around it and trim with your scissors. I don't worry so much about that. I just care more about those longer fibers. Next we're going to bring our wire ribbing forward. Looks like I might have it caught on a piece of tailing fiber. Once I get into that thorax area, just get a few aggressive wraps in there and we can helicopter it away. All right, next over our thorax, we're going to be tying in some peacock hurl. So I'm just going to kind of mash everything down a little bit. Wrap back. I've selected two pieces for this. Let's just line them up by their tips. I'm going to tie them in with one relatively loose wrap. I can just pull them from their butt ends until I have them so I can lock them down in place. And now if you've noticed, I've wrapped relatively far back over that thorax because I want to leave a healthy space at the front of the hook for whenever I put on our, our soft tackle. So we really have to think about that. If you're ever in doubt, take another wrap back. That will be okay to, to really extend this thorax a little bit. I'm going to advance my thread forward and now let's just wrap this peacock curl. Okay, as we get it close to the eye, we'll lock it in place with the about five or six wraps. And then finally let's get to our soft tackle. Um, again referencing um, this book that I'll be talking about later in the video, uh, the, uh, the originators recommend a dark dun uh, hen hackle for it. I've used the dark dun hen hackle for it. I really love a grizzly hen hackle for it. It just it looks really great on this pattern as well. And today I'm going to be using just a darker, this is a, a more of a brown. If you look at it with all this light on, it's going to reflect a lot of browns. It's not a black by any means. Sometimes I might look at it and think, geez, this is borderline black, but it's just a darker hen hackle. One. And that's what I'm looking for for this fly. If you don't have a done, don't stress. You can really get away with just a darker hen. It could be black. It could be dark done. It could be a really dark brown, but that's what I'm going to shoot for. I've already prepped my feather. What I've done, this was just one feather that I removed. I pulled all the scruffy fibers off the bottom and I removed all the fibers off of, as you're looking at it, its left side. So what I can do now is just kind of pull some of these other fibers in their opposite direction and create a tie-in spot. So right where those fibers, let's see if I can show you this really well, right where that gap is, right in here, I'm going to lock everything in place. Let's get that excess out of there. I'm going to attach my, I have a pair of Stonfo hackle pliers. I really like it for these soft hackle applications. I'm just going to attach them to the stem. And I want to make about three turns around this. Now as you're making these turns, if that hackle is not unwinding itself, just kind of help it a little bit. Make sure it does evenly spread out because that's what you want to get here. I want to make sure they're always going back too. If there's one, I'm going to try to wrap in front of those ones. Just pull them back and help them along the way. There's two. And here is my third wrap around. Just again, pushing against the grain of those fibers just to kind of move them. I see one that I don't like. Something happened there. So I'm just going to back it off a second. 
Make sure I get all those locked in place. That one is still not liking me, but the, we'll take care of him after we're done here. All right, now let's, let's get this soft tackle locked in. Now we know that's not gonna be going anywhere. Let me take a peek at what this guy is doing. Looks like he'll be okay if I just kind of bring it back in, wrap at the head a little bit. Everything's looking good there. And it's at this point we could whip finish. I'm just gonna do a few first. I'm not gonna place any um, any head cement on this fly. I don't think there's a need for it. But I will go with two whip finishes. After that second one, we can trim our thread away and there is our finished purple soft tackle. Just a really classy looking fly. That tail you can see with all that modeling, is it as dark as it's recommended in this text I'm gonna be referring to? Probably not. I can tell you I haven't noticed that big of a negative impact by going with a, just a little bit of a lighter shade. Um, the other thing I really wanna point out to everybody is the fact that we built up this peacock thorax and that really helps these soft tackle fibers just kind of make their way around. Now, the last thing I'd like to mention before we, we talk a little bit more about the fly from a fly fishing perspective is the body color. It can be kind of difficult sometimes to find some purple dubbing out there. I can tell you I have a couple other purple dubbings that I've used over the years, and I'll show you the difference because if you're looking at this right now, I bet you're seeing a lot of olives in there as well. So let's, let's show you a couple others that I've found over the years and also had success with with this pattern. Here's one, and I bet this is looking like a lot more of that olive look to you. I wish I could tell you something about this material, but I can't. Besides, I bought it somewhere. There's nothing marked on the outside of the package, and it's more of a light purple. I think I may have purchased this to use on steelhead flies years ago. It's a synthetic material. It does not dub very easily. I'll be honest, I don't really like the, the, the material that much. It does have a nice color. So just to kind of keep that in mind, there is a, another lighter shade out there that, that may work for you as well. And then finally, I have one more color that I really like. Let me show you this one. It's a little bit darker than that previous shade. And this color is plum. Now I can't tell you a ton about this dubbing. Uh, what I can tell you is uh, there's a guy that I met through my videos. His name's Charles. I don't want to give out his contact information because I, I haven't asked him to and I know he's not making this from a production standpoint yet. But Charles dubs a bunch of just incredible colors. And this is one of them. This is his plum color. And it just has some just awesome shades in it. You can see a little bit of crystal flash. Just giving off some, just some really nice reflections. Um, Charles, if you're watching this video, this stuff is absolutely killer. It looks great on this purple soft hackle. Um, it works really well, guys. So um, if Charles ever starts to uh, produce this material, I by all means will mention it. it. He'll be listed somewhere on my website because this is just some great stuff. He has a bunch of other great colors. And uh, if you email me, if you're possibly interested in getting some from him, um, let me know. I'll at least pass a message on to him if you are and, um, and see if he's interested. But, but with that said, that now hopefully it makes a little bit more sense why I tie with that DRC because this Delaware River Club, it's it's a place that you can buy the hackle, or I'm sorry, buy the dubbing from them online, a little bit easier to come by. It's worked for me over the years. I can tell you that I also tie a lot of my Isonikia dry flies with this same color that they have. So with all of that said, uh, let's kind of take a step away from the fly tying vise for a second and uh, let's talk a little bit more about this pattern from a fly fishing perspective too. Now that we've finished tying this pattern, let's talk about it a little bit more, both from a fly tying and fly fishing perspective. Well, first, I learned about this pattern over a decade ago. I was fly fishing in the central Pennsylvania area, and I stumbled into this little fly shop that I'd never heard of before, owned by Skip Galbraith and Eric Straup. The two of them were extremely knowledgeable, and they were more than willing to share information. And I was sharing just an experience that I had the night before with these really large mayflies, and then the two of them enlightened me about the Isonychia, otherwise known as the Slate Drake. 
I'm not going to go into too many details about this fly specifically, but what I can tell you about this mayfly is that this is a pattern that, at least in central Pennsylvania, hatches around the middle of June, and this is not what I would define as a prolific hatch, where you look up into the air and just see thousands of bugs. Instead, this tends to be a hatch that lasts for an extended period of time. We're talking about weeks, and that's a really great thing because this is a fly that just seems to get burned into the memory of trout which means that you can fish this pattern with confidence from the middle of June the whole way into the fall into October. So keep that in mind. Well, after Eric and Skip were telling me a little bit more about the hatch, Eric said, Tim, you absolutely have to have a few of these on the water tonight. I purchased some from him and did not regret it at all. I've kept in contact with Eric over the years, and this seemed to be one of those flies that I wanted to keep kind of close to me. I didn't want to share it with a lot of other people, even though we could purchase them from Eric. Then in 2009, that changed a little bit because Eric published a book called Common Sense Fly Fishing. Now, this is a really great book. It's a quick read, more for that beginner to beginning intermediate angler. Talks a lot about just some fly fishing tips, some really straightforward advice, and it's, it's a book that I absolutely would recommend. I've read it a number of times, and I turn to it every now and then. It also gives some leader formulas, and then at the very back, there's about, I don't know, a dozen, a dozen and a half, dozen and a half patterns with pictures that Eric classifies as guide flies. And if you've looked at my website at all or have watched this channel for a regular period of time, you'll know that I just absolutely love guide flies. And what we mean by guide flies are flies that are just quick to tie and very effective to fish. So Eric included the purple soft tackle in this, this book, so now I don't feel so guilty sharing it on my YouTube channel. Now let's talk a little bit more about this now from a fly tying perspective. For starters, what's great about this fly is that it's one that you can vary slightly based on the materials that you have at your desk. Instead of tying it with a dark dun tail, you can also vary that. You can go with something like Coque de Leon, which I've tied before and I've had success with. The same thing goes for that soft tackle. Instead of using a dark dun soft tackle, I've also used a grizzly hen before. And I've really had success with that and I've really liked that barred look that that grizzly gives. Now, however, there are some characteristics that I really like to just kind of keep in common whenever I'm tying this pattern. Number one, I love that silver ribbing. I don't know why, but I just think that looks really great. It just gives a nice profile against that purple color. The other thing that I absolutely find is essential with this fly is fishing it in larger sizes. Now, I'm a big fan of fishing larger flies, and if you're anything like me, you will absolutely appreciate the fact that we get to fish this in a size 10 or a size 12, which is a really large size for a soft hackle, especially whenever we consider this with an extended body. Now, let's talk a little bit about how to fish this fly. In the book, and, and I know from personal experience with Eric, he prefers to fish this not necessarily as that point fly, because we're going to be fishing this under the water surface, but imagine that we have a point fly that goes a little bit lower in the water column, then you come up that, and we have a dropper coming off of your leader. That dropper, Eric recommends tying with 3X and then attaching this purple soft tackle to the dropper, so that the fish are going to see it a little bit higher up, in that water column, and he recommends 3X because the fish just seem to slam this fly, and I absolutely agree. Eric prefers to fish it more in riffles versus pools, and I absolutely agree with him, though there are times when I will fish this fly by itself, I'll work my way up the center of a river, I'll put a little bit of floating on it, and I will just absolutely barrage the banks back and forth, back and forth, just making my way forward, trying to pick off a fish that's just sitting along the edge that will see this coming down and recognize it as that slate drake that they love to eat. I prefer to fish it right in the film and it's large enough that you can see it even if it goes down a half of inch or so into the water. And those fish will just absolutely take it with vicious strikes. <laughs> Trust me on that. It's a fly that I absolutely recommend and it's one that I love to have on the end of my line. Well, with all that said, I hope you did enjoy learning a little bit more about this purple soft tackle, otherwise known as the Isonychia or Slate Drake. If you have any questions or comments, please feel free to leave them directly on this YouTube page, or you can contact me at tkamisa at gmail.com. If you'd like to watch more of my fly tying or fly fishing videos, you can check out my website, which is troutandfeather.com. I also have a Facebook page through Trout and Feather, and if you like that page, you'll just receive some regular fly tying and fly fishing updates. And then my final thoughts regarding the Isonychia or the Slate Drake, and I kind of like to reach out to all of you right now regarding this fly. I'm curious to hear about your own experiences with the Isonychia. Have you heard of it before? And if so, what type of pattern do you really prefer to fish? 
because that's something, this is one of those hatches that there's a lot of guys that fish it, but there's also a lot that don't know so much about it, especially knowing that by the middle of June, there are a lot of fly fishermen that are no longer out there. And also that same fact continues into September and October. And this is one of those flies that you can fish during those times when there may not be a lot of other guys out there. So for those of you that do fish these patterns, do like fishing the Isonychia and fishing that slate drake, what type of flies do you like to fish to represent that hatch? I'd love to hear a little bit more from you, especially to help out those beginning and those intermediate anglers and fly tires. Well, with all of that said, everybody, thank you so much for watching this fly tying video on Eric Straups and Skip Galbraith's Purple Soft Hackle.